For a movie star whose youthful appeal is so potent that his comedies often feel as if they were made by actual kids, Adam Sandler does not have a great record when it comes to family animation. His Hotel Transylvania series was a hit, but its best moments come from Tartakovsky's sensibility rather than Sandler's dad jokes about Happy Madison. Mmm, Tartakovsky left after the third film in the series. Sandler was left to his own devices when it came to animation, and he came up with things like Eight Crazy Nights, 2002, a flop that had all the toilet humor Sandler had in his live-action movies, but none of the oddball charm. Perhaps Sandler's movies are so juvenile that making them kid-friendly is an exercise in futility. Even so, the most recent installment of Sandler's Netflix deal gives another chance to make the Sandman palatable to kids who aren't quite old enough to appreciate Billy Madison's stunts. Sandler he plays the character young by playing the character old. He infuses a gurgling squawk with the voice of Leonardo, 74 years old. The iguana has been the class pet in the fifth grade since the Truman era. He sits in his tank with his best friend, the recently renamed Squirtle, played by Bill Burr, and watches as kids go through the last year of primary school. As he watches, he realizes that his life may be drawing to a close and that he doesn't have much to offer. When the domineering and not-so-glowing Mrs. Malkin becomes the class's long-term substitute and demands that the class pets be sent home with students in an effort to instill responsibility, Leo devises an escape plan. Robert Smeagol, co-pilot on this mundane-sounding mission, is a former SNL writer and writer in training for Conan O'Brien. He's best known for making stuff that only looks childishly child-friendly, like his cartoon character, Triumph, or his SNL animated TV funhouse segments. Moona was a short-lived Comedy Central series that went even further with puppeteer, hosted ghoulishness. Smiggle and Sandler, along with Paul Sato, co-wrote the movie together, and Smiggle is also credited as director, along with TV funhouse veterans, including Watchtenheim, Marionetti, and Sandler. The nondescript, illumination-style character designs look like Sandler is trying to avoid more pushback from a Tartakovsky-level stylist. On the writing level, Leo pays a lot of familiar animations. Instead of sending the sheltered lizard on a great outdoor adventure and slash or meeting a special kid he can relate to, the movie continues with a delightfully clever plot. Every weekend, Leo goes home with a fifth grader and tries to escape, accidentally revealing that he can talk and ends up giving grown-up, maybe even downright grandfatherly, advice for kids who feel stuck in Mrs. Malkin's newly strict classroom. It's a beautiful, even surprising dynamic that Smiggle and company have created that relieves the formal rigidity of so many big studio sets. When the family of one child goes to a musical, the film is a full-length musical with half a dozen songs. The film cuts to another room where singing can be heard from the other side of the wall. The filmmakers are aware of the rules and happily break them. The fact of Leo's speech itself is not motivated by some loophole that explains how people understand him and why. He just keeps quiet with people, noting that if word gets out about his ability to speak, they'll try to kill him. Like e. T. Conceptual ingenuity should probably be expected from Smiggle, who brought his satirical eye to Sandler's two best comedies, The Zohan and The Week Of, but Leo, like The Week Of, also has a gentle, observant wit that allows the film to approach both children and their upbringing with a certain skeptical love, a mockery of helicopter parenting, with an overly attentive drone, a.k. sniping. Family writes with a life lesson song about how nobody is that great. At times, the film recalls the child-centric episode of the classic Simpsons in its understanding of classroom antics and its ability to resonate with viewers of all ages. I and the end. The film becomes a thinly veiled parable about the value of teachers, augmented by a comedian's ego. Sandler once again portrays a character admired by everyone in the film, this time for his apparent wisdom. The self-aggrandizement is easy enough to forgive, however, because the film specifically addresses the desire to be loved as part of Leo's character. More implicit is the film's meditation on age. Leo's advice to these children on the brink of adolescence preserves a bittersweet knowledge of the fleeting nature of childhood happiness. And if that all sounds a bit heavy for a family film, remember that Leo is consistently silly and very funny. One of the best comedies of the year, animated or not, Sandler's inner child and outer adult have rarely felt so in sync. Court Decision Lion looks like the usual big studio animation that Netflix puts out regularly, but it's much funnier and unexpectedly cuter than your average children's cartoon. In fact, Robert Smeagol, Adam Sandler, and company made one of the funniest movies of the year, a love letter to the complexities of teaching kids in and out of the classroom.